Hello year one and welcome to Wednesday's Math. So today we're learning about comparing addition number sentences. But before we do that, we're just going to review our fact family learning that we've been doing. Okay, so our review question today is a bit of a problem solving question. So this is Ben and he says the missing number is 14. So he's got a bar model here and he's got two of the numbers in there, but one number is missing and he's tried to work out uh, where the numbers go and he's got thinks that the missing number is 14. Is he correct? If not, what mistake might Ben have made? So I just want you to have a little think and engage in some mathematical talking at home or with your talk partner in school to think about what mistake Ben might have made and then come back to me and I'll share my thinking. Well done, year one. So I'm going to share my thinking about this question now. And I wonder if you thought the same thing as me. So Ben says that the missing number is 14. This is the missing number here. So if I put that 14 in there, I've got part, part, whole. Six is a part, 14 is a part, and eight is the whole. And I'm thinking, hmm, 14 is bigger than eight. So how can it be one of my parts if eight's the whole? So now I'm thinking, hmm, what could I do? So if eight is going to remain my whole, I'm thinking, wow, if six is one part, what would my other part be? So can you remember how last, I think it was last lesson, we thought about how we could find the missing part? We put that six in our heads and we counted on until we got to eight through that hole, didn't we? So put the six in our head, going to count on until we get to eight and see what that missing part is. Okay, ready? Six, seven, eight. So I've got two. So then, does that make a bit more sense? Six add two gives me eight. Well, that's six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's better. Part, part, whole makes more sense. So where has he got this number 14 from then? I think he's made a little bit of a mistake here and he's added the whole and one of the parts together to try and find the other part. But we know, don't we, that it's always part add part equals whole, not um, part add whole equals part or whole add part equals part. Maybe he was getting a little bit confused with his subtraction. When we start off with the whole and we subtract, maybe he got a little bit confused with his generalizations. So if eight was down here and it was my part, well then this would be my whole 14. So I think what he's done is he's added the part and the whole together and he's used that as his other part when really it should be part add part equals whole. So I wonder if you thought the same as me, if you spotted that he had used um, the two wrong numbers and added them together and he didn't find the correct missing number. So our fact family now with the correct number in place, and get rid of the 14 because we know that that's not the correct number. My uh, fact family would be two add six equals eight. And then we know we can swap them around and we could have six add two equals eight. And then we'll do our think about our subtraction and we'll start with our whole. So eight take away six would give me two. And eight take away two would give me six. Now you might have done it a little bit differently to me. You might have thought about changing the whole uh, to 14 because like I said eight if eight was our part 14 would be the whole so you might have done it differently but that's a good thing to show that you're thinking mathematically in a different way that you could do things okay so well done uh, year one so we're going to move on to today's learning and we are using this language more than less than and equal to again Okay, now can you remind the person who's with you at home or your foot partner in school, what does equal to mean? We know about more than and we know about less than. What does equal to mean? So please pause the video to have a quick conversation. Well done. So equal to means that it is the same. Okay, so we've got more than, less than or equal to. So there's two tens frames. 
and there are two numbers in this to go with each sentence. Now, a good idea would be to find out the answer to these two number sentences, and then we can use the correct phrase to compare them. Okay, when we compare, we look at both, and then we decide what goes in the middle. So that's why we need to find out the answer to both. You've got four, add three. So let's put that four in our head and count on from four. We've got five, six, seven. Okay, so four add three gives us seven. We could also have looked at this tens frame and we know that it's not full and we can see that there are three blank spaces and we know that when we have three, if we add seven, we get 10. So that can be a really quick way of finding out what that missing number was, but we can also count them as well. Okay, now we want to find out what the answer to three add four is. So we've got four yellow counters here, so let's put the four in our head and count on. So four, five, six, seven. So three add four equals seven. Now do you notice how those two number sentences are similar, aren't they? The numbers have swapped around. So if we've got seven here and seven here, what do we need to put in the middle? Four add three is what? And four, three add four. It's equal to, isn't it? Because it's given us the same answer. So we're just going to read the black part when we say our um, stem sentence. So four add three is equal to three add four. Can you see how they're exactly the same? Even though the tens frames look slightly different, they've got exactly the same number in them. Brilliant, well done, year one. So question one, you're going to find out what the two number sentences are that are represented by these two tens frames. So there's one here, well, there's two tens frames here, and there's two tens frames here. Okay, and I want you to find out what the number sentences are and then choose more than, less than or equal to to go in the middle. Okay, so please pause the video now and have a go. Well done, year one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five red counters here. I'm going to pop that on my first line. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six yellow counters. Now to find out my answer, remember I can put the five in my head and I can count the yellow counters, or can you see that this is a full tens frame here? And there's just one more there, so 10 and one more is 11. That's even quicker than counting on from five. So we found out now that five and six equals 11. And on this side, we've got how many red counters? One, two, three red counters. And we've got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yellow counters. But three add nine. And again, we can put this ten in our head instead of counting on from three, because that takes a long time. But ten in our head, count on ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve counters altogether. So now I'm not finished because I haven't used one of my uh, more than less than or equal to phrases yet. So five add six is what? And three add nine. So we're looking at the answer to help us. So 11 is less than 12, so it's going to be less than in the middle. And when we read our number sentence, we can just focus on this part. We don't really need to say the answer. We would say five add six is less than three add nine. Do you think you can say that with me, year one? Are you ready? Five add six is less than three add nine. Brilliant, well done, year one. Okay, now for this one, we've got, we haven't got the words to help us, but we have got this symbol, haven't we? We've got less than, more than, and equal to. So it's exactly the same, but this time we're using the symbols to help you, okay? So in the same way as you did with the last one, you need to find out what the number sentences are, are represented by the ten streams are first, and then I'd like you to put the correct symbol in the middle. Okay, well, we'll do this one together, actually, I think. So, how many red counters have we got? Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight red counters. And we've got how many yellow counters? One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm gonna do eight. Add four. And then to find out my answer, I've got 10 here, haven't I? So you can count on from 10, 11, 12. So I've got 12 all together there. So eight add four equals 12. And then this one, I'm going to count the red counters. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six red counters. 
and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yellow counters. Okay, and then what's the answer? So again, I could put that six in my head and count on, but I'm going to put the whole ten in my head because I can see that that ten frame is full. So counting from ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So six add eight is fourteen. Okay, and I'm not done yet because I haven't used one of my symbols yet. So I'm thinking now, which is the biggest number? Remember the biggest part of our symbol goes towards the biggest numbers and get my pen to draw it. Okay, my biggest number, is it 12 or is it 14? Well, 14 is my biggest number. So the biggest part of the symbol is going to go towards the 14. 12 is less than 14. So this is the less than symbol. So now when I read my sentence, I'm just going to focus on the first part. So I don't need to say the answer. I can say the answer. I don't need to say the answer. Okay, so I can say now, I'm going to say it first and you can say it after me. Eight add four is less than six add eight. Do you think you can say that with me, Reggie? Eight add four is less than six add eight. Brilliant, well done. Okay, so year one, this is your turn now. So exactly the same as I've just done. I found out the answer to both of these number sentences, I've written the number sentences, found out the answer, and then I've used the correct more than, less than, or equal to symbol to go in the middle, okay? So it's question two, so please pause the video to have a go at this one. Okay, well done, year one. So let's think about it together. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six red counters. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yellow counters. So six and eight. I'm going to put ten in my head, and I can see that there are four more after the ten. So one ten and four ones gives me the number fourteen. So six and eight is fourteen. And then I've got three red there. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yellows. And then I'm going to look at the full tens frame again. I've got two more after the full tens frame. So uh, 10 and two more is 12. So 3 add 9 is equal to 12. Okay, now I'm not done. I need to think about including my symbols. Remember, the biggest part of the symbol goes towards the biggest number. So you're, you need to think about where that goes. So the biggest number is 14. So the symbol is going that way. So this is the more than symbol. And now I can go through and I can read my number sentence, just focusing on these parts. Okay, so I'll say it first and then you say it with me. Six add eight is more than three add nine. Okay, your turn with me. Six add eight is more than three add nine. Fantastic, well done year one. So question three and question four are your final two today. This time we haven't got the tens frame to help us just got the number sentences. So you need to find out the answers to the number sentences first, and then you can use less than, more than, or equal to in the middle. Okay, so you're gonna use um, your counting on method to find out the answer. So you, if you've got six to start with, you'll put that six in your head, and you've got five now, and you want to count on. I do that with all of the questions to help you. This one is one of our learn it facts. We should know what this one is. Um, and then don't forget to put that symbol in the middle. So have a go at both question three and question four and come back to me when you have done that. Well done, year one. So six add five, I'm gonna put that six in my hand. I can count on five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So six add five is equal to 11. And then seven add four, I'm gonna put the seven in my hand. I'm gonna count on four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I've got 11 on one side and 11 on the other side. So what does that mean for the symbol that goes in the middle? Well, that means that they are going to be equal to, so six add five is equal to seven add four. So even though they're completely different number sentences, they give us the same answer. So those, this six add five is equal to seven add four. So can you say that with me, ready? Six add five is equal to seven add four. 
Brilliant. And the last one, well, this is a nice one, isn't it? So we've got a 10 and we've got a four. So 10 and four ones gives us the number 14. Well done. And this is a double, one of our learn it doubles. So six and six is 12. Well done. Six and six is 12. And then thinking, what symbol do we need to use more than, less than, or equal to? Well, are those numbers the same? No, so they're not going to be equal to. So which is the biggest number? Well, 14 is my biggest number. So that means it's going to be more than because the symbol, the biggest part of the symbol is facing this way. The biggest number, and it comes first. So if it's more than, so my turn. 10 add four is more than six add six. Now your turn with me. 10 add four is more than six add six. Well done, year one. So it's a few steps to this. We have to do finding out the answer to the numbers and then thinking about which comparison symbol, or which language we use. And it's also tricky to get that whole sentence together, but I know that you're doing a great job. So well done, year one. And we will see you tomorrow for some more maths. Bye, everyone.